This video is going to go over 8.2 in our book, which is integration by parts. Uh, all of Chapter 8 has different techniques of integration, so what I'm going to try to do is dedicate one video per technique, so you can practice if there's one that you need a little more practice with, you can watch that video maybe a little more, and then I'll look at doing a kind of a review of everything right before you take a test or a quiz. So this is all about integration by parts. The nice thing is you will have a note card to look at, you'll have that summary to look at to help you figure out what part is what when it comes to setting it up, and then from there just using the formula. So the first one uh, comes from the very beginning of the topic, one of the most basic ones. Uh, we are writing down our u, our du, our dv, and our v. And sometimes it helps to have the equation up, written up top, the integral of v du, or sorry, the integral of the other way around, the integral of u dv is equal to uv minus the integral of v du. So you have a place to look, and this should be written on your note card. So with this one, whenever you have x's mixed with trig, you want the x's to be the u, so u is x and du is 1, and you want the dv to be the trig, so cosine of 3x. Now remember when you integrate it, you're going to have a 1 third. It's going to be 1 third the sine of 3x. It's probably the most common mistake that you see on tests and quizzes of this type is adjustments, messing up adjustments and messing up pluses and minuses. Now we're going to put everything in, so it's this times this, so x times one-third, so I'm going to write it as x over 3 sine of 3x minus the integral of these two multiplied together, which is minus the integral of one-third sine of 3x. Integrate that, um, you can bring the one-third out front. What ends up happening is you end up having another adjustment because of the angle, so you have another one-third, which gives you a one-ninth. The integral of sine is negative cosine, but you already have a negative, so you end up as positive one-ninth cosine 3x plus c. So that's the first one coming from the very beginning of the section, just the basic set everything up, plug everything in the formula type example. The next example I have is one that I actually found on an AP test, and it's the, one of the, it's the only integral that you need to be able to do on an AB scenario of the AP test. It was on a non-calculator section. Obviously, if you had a calculator, you could just plug this in with your FNINT button. So this was one of the ones we actually did in class. We just didn't do boundaries. So I'm going to start it the same way to kind of review. So set up everything here. My u has to be the natural log of x, and the derivative of that is 1 over x. My dv then is just dx, or 1 dx, and the integral of that is x. So when I match this up, I get x natural log of x minus the integral. When I multiply these together, the x's will cancel, so I just get 1. So I get x natural log of x minus x. I don't have to put the plus c, though, because I'm putting boundaries in. So here's where you have to do a little more work. Put in e, so I get e natural log of e minus e minus, when I put 1 in, I get 1 natural log of 1 minus 1. e natural log of e, the natural log of e is 1, so I get e minus e, those will cancel. The natural log of 1 is 0, so that cancels. So in the end, the only thing I have left is a negative and a negative 1, which gives me positive 1, and that is my answer. The answer would be letter D. So it kind of shows you an example of how a multiple cho choice question can be asked. And a lot of these problems are very straightforward, not even just on my test, but even on the AP test. A lot of the directions will simply say integrate or integrate and plug boundaries in, and your choices will either be correct versions of the integral or of what would get happen if your boundaries were plugged in. The last one I want to go through with you, I want to show you an example of that tabular method that we did in class. It was the shortcut method that really helped us when you're working with x's and e's or x's and trig, where your x has a higher power. Because if you look at this particular problem, if we would go through and do this the way we did the first day of integration by parts, we would have to repeat the integration by parts formula four times because it's a fourth degree. Every time we do it, it drops down a degree, but it takes a long time to get back to a basic equa equation that I can just integrate. So what I did instead is we set up a table, and I definitely think this is worth practicing because you are going to be doing it on a test and on a quiz, you have a u column and you have a dv column. You're going to put your x's in your u column, and the goal is to derive all the way down until you get to 0. So you have x to the 4th, and then you have 4x to the 3rd, and then 12x squared, 24x, 24, and 0. The higher the degree, the more entries will be in your column because you have to keep going and going until you get down to zero. And make sure that your 
do all your basic arithmetic right. I've seen students that mess up one multiplying. Like, for example, when they do the derivative of 4x cubed, they accidentally don't multiply 4 times 3 and get 12. They get something else. It throws everything off. So you want to be careful with those easy early steps. Then for the integration column, I'm going to put e to the negative 2x. Now, every time I integrate, I'm going to divide by a negative a half. That's going to be the adjustment. So I'm going to have negative 1 half e to the negative 2x, and then positive 1 fourth e to the negative 2x, and then negative 1 eighth e to the negative 2x, and then positive 1 sixteenth e to the negative 2x, and finally negative 1 thirty second e to the negative 2x. Again, make sure you adjust when you integrate. If it's a trig function, make sure you're dividing by that angle. If it's an, like e to the x, like this one, make sure you're dividing by the derivative of the power and watch your signs. The last piece before you start writing your answer is to match up which terms get multiplied and adjust for the signs. So these two are going to go together, 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 and these two. So you will have five terms to your answer. The other thing you want to do is that when we work with integration by parts, we have that alternating signs, that positive, negative, positive, negative. So what we want to do is we want to multiply the first pairing by a positive one, which won't change it, the second pairing by a negative one, the third pairing by a positive, the fourth by a negative, and the last by a positive. And now let's write down what we've got. So my first term ends up being negative one-half, so I'm just going to write it as x to the fourth over two, e to the negative two x. My next one is also negative, and the 4's cancel. If you don't cancel the 4's, you'd still get full credit. So I end up with negative x cubed e to the negative 2x. My next one ends up being negative because of this negative sign right there. So it is 12 over 8. You can leave it as 12 over 8. You can reduce it to 3 over 2. So you can write it as minus 3x squared over 2, or you can leave it as 12x squared over 8 e to the negative 2x. My next one ends up being negative as well. And we have 24 sixteenths. You can leave it as 24 sixteenths, or you can divide everything by 4 and actually you can divide it by 8. You would also get 3 over 2. So you can write it as 3x over 2 e to the negative 2x. And then the last one is also negative. So we end up with a lot of negative signs here. And we end up with Oh, I didn't have my negative there. Hold on, the last term should be negative. Because of that, this negative sign that I circled. And the last one is also negative, and it ends up being 24 30 seconds. So we can either reduce that, that would be 3 fourths, or you can leave it as 24 30 seconds, and you still get full credit. So minus 3 fourths e to the negative 2x plus c. So I have a long answer. And actually, what ends up happening is every single term ends up being negative because you either have a negative from the integral or you have a negative whenever you adjust for the signs. I reduced. You do not have to reduce. If it's a multiple choice, you're going to look for reduced answers. If it's a short answer, you can leave it as 12 over 8, or you can write it as 3 over 2. You can leave something as 24 over 32, or you can write it as 3 over 4. It does not matter. As long as you're multiple choice, you simplify enough to get the right answer. So that gives you a good example of when the tabular method would obviously save you a ton of time. If this would have been an x squared or an x cubed, you definitely can still use the tabular method. I tend to, if I have to do it more than once, I'm going to use the tabular method anytime we have x's with e's or x's with trig. Uh, the only time that you doesn't help us when we have to do it more than once is the situation where we had the e's and the trig, like the e to the x sine x, where you have to do the cycling in more of an algebra technique. But with these type of problems, when you can get your derivative simpler and simpler, it makes it a lot faster and a lot less chance of making mistakes. So this reviews a little bit of everything with integration by parts and what you'll have to be able to do to be successful on your quiz and test.